Have you ever had a dream where the My Little Ponies turn evil and start coming after you? Well, prepare to be triggered. What's up everybody, Jay here, and coming back with another tip for World of Final Fantasy, and this time I'm going to help you catch probably the most overpowered medium-sized mirage in the game, at least before in-game or post-game content, and that is Nightmare. And yes, that is an evil unicorn you're about to capture. So we'll get into why Nightmare is so overpowered a little later, but first let's go through the steps of just getting to him and hopefully trying to capture him. So first you need to make it to chapter 17 and you need to make it through chapter 17. While not way too difficult to get through, there can be a ton of fights, especially if you keep getting something like the Chrome Giant. And it's just kind of a long chapter, especially coming off of the big bridge. This one was not any better. So if you got the stealth jewel from the previous chapter, I would definitely put it on in this place. But personal preference aside, once you get through chapter 17, you're eventually going to make your way to this save point right here. If you're looking at the map, this is inside Necropolis 5. So once you zap on the panel right here next to the save point, you'll see one of the trains lift up and you'll see a gimme golem. You don't have the item for him yet, so we're going to go get that right now. Just follow the path south a little bit and you're eventually going to come up to a treasure chest that will have the wear wheel in it. There's another zap panel right here that can raise up another train that'll let you go get a Mega Phoenix, so grab that if you want to also. So once you have that wear wheel, head back to where the Gimme Golem was. Give him the wear wheel, and the path to Nightmare is actually open. But before you go to him, I would still save. And if you're wearing the Stealth Jewel, or especially if you're not, I would put it on for this part, because you're about to walk back and forth a lot. Hey, gotta interrupt my own video here, because I totally forgot a part and <laughs> didn't record audio for it, so this is coming in after the fact. Uh, right here, after you do the Gimme Golem and before you move on to the next area, there is a puzzle switch and it needs 11 weight and 100 lightning resistance. So I don't mention it anywhere else in the video, so sorry for that. But yeah, you need 11 weight and 100 lightning resistance, which if you have Zapped and Ramu, which thankfully you have a save point really close by so you can easily go get them into your party if you don't, they cover most of that they definitely cover the lightning resistance because that'll put you at 200 and then that way you can take any other mirage you want in the middle spot and not ruin it so in the video you'll see that i take zapped and ramu but i also take shark Wool in the middle who would you think would kill lightning resistance but it only takes me down to 150 but also puts me at 12 weight so it's perfect right there if you don't have zapped you might have to play around just a little bit could be a little difficult might have to find somebody somebody in the middle who's got some decent lightning resistance but past that the requirements aren't too hard to get but like i said it's just easier if you have zapped and ramu with you so before walking to the next area i would definitely suggest watching this part of the video first because as you walk into the next area, there is actually going to be four Merc Rifts. And the four are not the same fights. So having different Mirage setups, having different stack setups, is going to be key to making these easier. Now these four Merc Rifts vary in level. The one to the far left is level 43. The one that you first walk by is 35. The one to its right is 37. And the one at the very end of this area is 40. So before actually fighting these, I would suggest after every single one that you're gonna go back and save. So you should be at the save point right now, walk over here, you'll pick whichever one you wanna do first, fight it, and then you're gonna go back and save. So now let's break down what's inside these actual Mercury so you can decide what order you wanna do them in. The very first one that you come across, the level 35, has five Manticore in it. And Manticore are weak to water. So if you wanna either build up a water stack or if you wanna bring another water spellstone with you, that's one way to take this one out really quick. The second one on the right hand side, the level 37 one, is filled with five Corrigan. Now these guys are weak to fire. If you want to, you can bring an Ifrit stack, Phoenix, whatever, a fire spellstone, blaze, anything like that will help take these guys out real quick. The level 40 Merc Rift in the far back is filled with five Reaver Mews. Now these guys are also weak to fire, so if you do this one after the level 37 one, all you need to do is just go back and save and then come do this battle and the same party setup should work fine. And the last Merc Rift, the one to the left, the level 43 is filled with five red cap goblins. And these ones are weak to water, so you can still use the water stack from the very first Merc Rift you did, or you can just go rebuild again. And either way, whatever order you choose is up to you. You can do the level 35 and the 43 back to back. You can do the 37 and 40 back to back. You can build one stack water, one stack fire, and just keep going back to refresh and save. It's really up to you on how you wanna approach these but you do have to beat all four and you can do them in any order you want. Now, once you've beaten all four, a fifth Merc Rift will show up. As with the other ones, I suggest going back to say before you do this one, this will be the Merc Rift with Nightmare in it. So the way to set up for Nightmare is that you need dark attacks. So make two stacks that come with plenty of those. 
For me, I brought my left claw because he has a draining claw ability which inflicts dark damage and I brought the undead princess who has dark. So once you have a party built up, head back to the area with all the Murkrifts and initiate the fight with Nightmare. So the big thing to worry about here with trying to capture him is not even about his attacks. It's about you attacking him. He is a dark mirage, so he does have a resistance to dark, but he also only has 1100 health. So if you're trying to multi-trigger him by using multiple darks or the draining claw or any type of drain or other dark ability, you may want to heal him after one or two attacks. So you may only be hitting him for maybe three, 400 in attack, 200, whatever. But if you start to hit him with a few in a row and you're not paying attention, you could accidentally kill him. So hit him with however many spells you feel comfortable with and then just start trying to capture him. I went with two using my Drain Claw and Dark one time each, and it only took me two tries to actually capture him. And there you have it, the scary version of a My Little Pony. You are now the proud owner of Nightmare. So Nightmare doesn't come with a lot of health. He has decent strength boost, and he has really good magic defense boost, and even his ailment resistances are kind of weak except for sleep. He is completely immune to sleep, so if you put him in a stack, you will be immune to sleep unless somebody else negates it. But none of that is what is so strong about this Mirage. The strength of Nightmare comes in one simple ability, and that is gravity. So let's have a quick talk about gravity without getting on a soapbox or going too deep into it. But gravity does work the same way as it does in other Final Fantasies, and it doesn't work the same way. So in other Final Fantasies, if you use gravity, it usually does about 25% of the current health of the enemy you're fighting. Now you would think that that's kind of overpowered if you use it against a boss, but it doesn't work the same against bosses. It usually has some sort of cap or they come with an immunity to it. Not in World of Final Fantasy. In World of Final Fantasy, gravity does one fourth of the health, so 25%, and that works the same on bosses. So you can go into a fight, use gravity once or twice, and you have already taken out a huge chunk of the boss's health. Now the only downside to gravity is it costs a lot of AP, but thankfully, ethers don't cost that much. So if you wanted to machine gun gravity for the first couple turns, you could easily have whoever has the nightmare stack cast gravity, have the other stack use an ether on the first one, or even a high ether, and then use gravity again on the very next turn. So in two quick turns, you can already have a boss down to almost half health. Because remember, it is not 25% of their total health, it is 25% of their current health. So after about the halfway point, gravity starts to really lose its, its luster. But still, for a lot of the fights you're going to be facing for the rest of this game, that can be a huge boost to your ability to kill these guys. But there you go. One of, in my opinion, the strongest mirages in the game, at least until you get to the post-game content. So hopefully this helped. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, maybe subscribe. I'm going to have more tips, more gameplay stuff, a bunch of in-game content coming up here pretty soon, some Final Fantasy 15 stuff when that comes out, because I'm excited. I'm ready. My body is ready. We're almost there. But until then, I will see you guys in the next one. Later. <laughs>